Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is a missing persons case who after all these years we still don't know what happened to her. She seemingly just vanished. It is that of Nancy Moyer. She was 36 years old at the time and a mother of two daughters. This case was suggested by Ruby so thank you for that. I appreciate any suggestions you guys have and if you have any more please do let me know. Nancy lived in Tonito in Washington in the US. She, as I said, had two daughters with her husband, Bill. And for the last two years, they had actually been separated. They were more heading towards getting a divorce than actually rekindling and getting back together. But they shared custody of the two daughters, which they both adored. They wanted to make it as normal as possible for them. I know they were split up and you know, whatever, but they still wanted everything to be as normal as possible between them. And, you know, she was a busy woman. She had her daughters to look after during the week. Her, well, separated husband would take them at the weekend. And she worked full time as well. She was an accountant for the Department of Ecology in Lacey, Washington. And she'd actually worked uh, for 12 years at that point. So. She loved her job, she was really good at it, and she was a very reliable worker. You know, they could trust her to be there on time, ring in if she was gonna be off, things like that. Basically, she, you know, she loved being a mum. She absolutely adored her children, and she would, he, her husband would have them from like Thursday to Sunday, and she would have them like the rest of the time. And then on the Sunday, they would obviously go back to their mum. So she's a working mom who works full time and then she gets the weekends to, I don't know, let loose and just chill out and have her own time and do whatever she wants to do. So on the 6th of March in 2009, Nancy had been at work just like any other day. She left She left her job at 5.15pm and she used to carpool with a co-worker. So she drops off her co-worker at their house and then she goes to a local grocery store at about 6.45 p.m. she gets there. She buys a few items, wine and something for a tea and things like that. She then decides to head home. So Nancy would often go out and have drinks and things and just, she had children young and whilst her children were with the father, she would go out and get drunk and do things that she couldn't do when she was young because she had young children. So it's like she was trying to catch up with that whereas not a lot of people do it when they're young and then have children she did it the other way around so she's had her children and now she's trying to sort of live that part of her life that she missed with having the kids now that she had the chance to do it but this weekend she didn't have any plans she just was gonna chill out at home by all accounts anyway by about nine between nine and nine thirty she arrives at a house and a police car is actually stationed pretty much opposite to her house. They're doing radar and it was a normal thing. They always did radar on that corner. And so that is why the police officer was there. And the police officer actually remembered seeing Nancy. She pulled up, she got, she got her groceries out of the car and she was on her own. They, the police officer then said that Nancy entered her house. Again, there was nobody with her or anything like that. She was just on her own and that, is the last time that anybody's reported seeing Nancy ever again. Her children come back on the 8th of March, which was the Sunday. The father, like normal, Bill, would go and drop them off. So he gets there with the girls and he notices that her car is all there, everything's there, but the door has been slightly left open, which he thought was really abnormal because it was really cold at that time. So why would she leave the door open letting all the cold in? He goes inside, the heating is actually on. So again, it didn't make sense to leave the door open because all of that heat is escaping outside because it's been left open. Only a slight bit, like just slightly ajar, but it was. Anyway, he goes inside, he has a look around, Nancy's nowhere to be seen. And after waiting a few minutes, because she's, like I said, very reliable, she would always be there to, you know, greet her girls. She would never just expect him to, them to come home to no one. 
but they thought maybe she's gone out for a jog maybe she's just gone out nipped out to the shop for or gone for a walk which she would do a lot she would go for walks and that she would be back very shortly so they waited and when she didn't come back bill decided to take the girls back to his house and wait a little bit and, you know obviously she's just distracted or something like that so off they go back to his house a bit later on he comes back again and nancy's still not there so he has a look around he finds on the table there are two glasses one which has had is about half full and i believe the other one was empty her keys purse she was a smoker and so her cigarettes were all there everything everything that you would normally take out if you were leaving especially cigarettes for a smoker something like that you know those are the kind of things you would take she didn't have a mobile phone i don't believe she owned one so obviously there was no digital footprint in that sense but all the things that you would normally take were all still in the house also i believe her id was in the kitchen as well so again there's just all this stuff that you would normally take with you if you were going somewhere and she just didn't take any of it it was weird so anyway he leaves again he thinks that's something strange you know there's something weird going on but he goes back to his house to the girls again thinking that if she is out somewhere still that she would call him but she never does police were called late on that same day the 8th and nancy was reported as a missing person like i said it wasn't like her to not be there for her girls her girls meant everything to her they were her complete world and for her to not be there to receive them was totally out of character police come and do searches of her home things like that and all they find is like her fingerprints inside nobody else's as they looked around there was no sign of fast, en fast entry no sign of a struggle no sign of anything like that there was just literally nothing and again she didn't have a mobile so they couldn't trace her pings or anything like that her family went on to say that when nancy disappeared by their knowledge at least that she wasn't dating anyone i believe she went on a few dates with different people but like not officially dating anyone and nothing serious she didn't have any personal problems she didn't have any mental health issues that was known about and so for her to just vanish was completely out of character for her and obviously her family were really worried about it and, and again she just wouldn't leave her daughters it wasn't something that she would do i don't think the family believed that she just walked away i believe, think they believed that something bad happened to her a neighbor of nancy's came forward later on to say that he actually thought that he heard nancy during that same night he heard some car doors opening heard nancy then say hurry up and get into the car and then the car door shut again and drove off that was about 11 p.m and he said he didn't really think much of it because he just thought she was talking to the kids like anyone would there was no cause for concern in what she was saying like at all so why would he think it was anything other than that apparently she was that night there was some speculation about her going to meet a co-worker but this co-worker said that she didn't turn up and then this co-worker went to round to her house the next morning saw that the door was ajar had a look around inside shouting her name and things you know no response and then just went the police spoke to him looked into him but i don't believe the co-worker was ever a suspect police really did think that nancy had actually been killed that night but i'm not entirely sure the circumstances around that whether it's just because they really didn't believe that she would just vanish or something like that i don't know then the police came across a man called bernard keith howell and he would go around selling meat to people and one day the police pulled him over because he was found with a dead woman in his pickup truck he initially said that this woman he found her dead in the forest or on a trail or something like that and because he wanted to spare her family the grief of it all he just bundled her up and put her in his truck and was driving around with her yeah people didn't believe it and it wasn't true he had actually killed her and he later did admit to that but how it could be related to nancy's case he again the meat thing he sold me and when they went into nancy's home she had this freezer full of all this fresh meat and nancy by all accounts was pretty much a vegetarian so bill thought it was weird that she had all this meat in there in the first place maybe she got it for you know her daughters or something like that i'm not entirely sure because it could be 
But she had all this meat, he's selling this meat, and then he's driving around with this dead dead woman in his car. You know, it kind of makes it look like he may have had something to do with Nancy. They questioned him with regards to Nancy as well. He denied everything. Apart, even, I believe, one of the daughters said that they kind of recognised him. But despite that, Bernard has never really been linked to the case fully and has never been an official suspect in it. The problem with this case is Nancy was, like I said, she was living the social life and going out and she kept that side of it very secretive, which, you know, who can blame her? Sometimes if you're out there partying and doing all these things, then, you know, you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to tell all your family that. And it's, it's a very private matter. She was out there living the single life and nobody really knew who she was socialising with and therefore that made it really difficult for police to try and track down anybody that, you know, she may have known, that may have done this to her because they did not know who she was hanging out with at all. And the police hadn't, didn't have any evidence to tie anybody in with anything really. Of course, Bill would be a massive suspect in the case. They looked into him straight away as you all know it's always family members husbands spouses things like that they look into first so they zoned in on bill he cooperated in every single way he took a polygraph straight away passed that just he did everything he could basically to try and clear his name because he said that he didn't do anything and so the police would looked into him they looked into him quite extensively and he was never thought as a suspect, he was basically cleared early on. So unfortunately the case went cold for many many years and then in July of 2019 it was reopened again when a man called Eric Lee Roberts, who was 51 years old at the time, rang 911 and admitted to killing Nancy. He said that he killed Nancy Moyer that night and that he had to get it off his chest. Initially he told police that night Nancy had attacked him and he killed her in self-defence. But then the story that he told the police changed. He then went on to say that he actually strangled her while they were having rough sexual intercourse and that it was all a complete accident. He also told police that he didn't think that Nancy's body would ever be found. They went to his house and dug up places in his, in his back garden and things like that. And he actually said to him, which I found very strange, that he didn't think that her body would be found because if it was him, he would, if he was trying to hide a body, he would, he pointed to like a fire pit and said that is where he would put it and that it would never be found. I don't know. So the police didn't find anything in all the searches that they did and then Eric would later recant his confession. He said that he didn't remember confessing and he was on all this medication at the time and that it could have been something to do with that why he didn't have a clue what he was doing so uh, the police didn't have enough evidence to tie him in to nancy's case like whatsoever and they couldn't file any charges on him because there was just no proof that he had done anything to nancy yes he confessed but then he recanted that and blamed it on medication so he was actually kept in custody on misdemeanor weapons charges and the police hoped that they could then gather enough evidence to connect him to Nancy's case but they couldn't and then he was obviously released later on and the weapons misdemeanor charges were actually dropped against him as well. Over the years the police have had many suspects come in and out and yet there's just not enough evidence to tie anyone into it fully. They still do not know what happened to Nancy. They have never brought any charges against anyone. I don't believe that there's any suspects in a case at the minute so it seems like you know after the six nancy went missing what happened to her remains a complete mystery and her case as of now still remains unsolved the thing that makes me really sad is that she left behind her two children and they are devastated and still have no idea what happened to them obviously the rest of nancy's family even bill you know they were on good terms yes okay they were separated heading towards a divorce but you know they were on really good terms together and he didn't, wouldn't have ever wanted anything to happen to her. She left behind so many people and it's just so devastating that nobody still knows what happened to her. Nobody, the family, that family doesn't have any closure whatsoever. Whether it be a body or not, like whether they finally find out what happened to her, I really hope that they do. So yeah, what do you guys think on this one? Do you think that Nancy just walked away? Or do you think that she met foul play? or something like that. I personally don't believe that she would have walked away from her girls. 
Like she seemed like he absolutely adored him, a world, world revolved around him, and so why would you just walk away from that? Seems to me more like somebody came to her house that night uh, later on that maybe she knew, maybe she was dating or whatever, because she had, again, she was living the single life and going seeing all these different people. There was no sign of a struggle at forced entry, and so who knows, maybe she, they came to her house and with her saying, get in the car quick, maybe she didn't want to be seen with this person by anyone and went with them somewhere and then, I don't know, maybe she met foul play. I do not believe that she walked away though, at all. But again, that is my personal opinion. We have no idea what happened to her. So yeah, that is the end of the case. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Nancy Moyer. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.